All right, hello world. How y'all doing this fine, fine day? Um, hope it's going good. Hope you're having a wonderful whatever time it is, day it is, whatever thing it is. One of these days I'm gonna start drinking water. That day is not today, but that's okay. Let's see what we got going on. So I've been doing a bunch of uh, Django tutorial stuff where I've been learning Django by writing a tutorial because the official Django tutorial does not get along with my brain. Um, but taking a break from that tonight, even though I really want to get that finished and start like using Django and I could, I could, I'm at a point where I could actually start using it pretty easily. Um, but, uh, oh, why is that open? Let me close that. Um, but I want to take a break, like, but I want to finish the tutorial before I start really using Django. Like I want to just get that chunk of work done, but I'm kind of ready to take a break from it for a little bit. Um, not exactly burned out on it, but kind of burned out on it. So we're going to, we're going to do something else tonight. So on the agenda, hopefully, uh, we'll see how far we get. Um, but I'm going to make some updates to the footer of my Hugo site. Um, there's a, it automatically puts footnotes down at the bottom, which I really like, but I don't like the way it puts the footnotes down there. So we're gonna update that. Um, uh, gonna automatically, I've got a process or I've got a script that I built that automatically renames the screenshots that Max produce, um, to my, my naming convention and directory structure, but it's not automated yet. So I want to hook up the automation on that and see if I want to tweak it at all. Um, I think it's just going to be hooking up the automation. Uh, the other one I want to do tonight is, or th these are the things that are possible, right? Um, anything's possible. Uh, when I make a link grabber, the thing I've been thinking about a little bit is I've got a link grabber that I built to capture stream notes. But what I thought what or I thought what might be interesting is actually to set up a little link grabber that just throughout the day, like every 15 minutes just grabs the links of whatever pages that I'm on. So at the end of the day, I would just have kind of like this archive that I could post to say, like, here's here's all the stuff that I touched today. Here's all the pages that are on. Because that also might be useful in terms of going through and like finding stuff in the past. Because there have been sometimes where it's like, oh, last week I saw this page and I can't find it in the history and whatever. So um, maybe that'll be helpful and useful. Um, we'll see. Uh, and then the last one that's similar that, that may kind of tie in is to write a process to see um, how many tabs are open throughout the day. I thought it would just be, might be neat to actually just kind of see a list of tabs or like a just a raw number. So like in the morning I have three tabs open and by 9 a.m. I have 15 tabs open and like just kind of watch the movement throughout the day. Um, just think it'd be interesting to see. So, uh, and that's, we'll use, the same kind of methodology as the link grabber. So, um, and some of that code I've already written to do the stream grabber. So I think we, I've got a fighting chance of making it through most of that stuff tonight. Um, should have put in the time that I was planning to stream tonight. So uh, we'll do a couple hours and see how it goes. Um, so anyways, updating the, the footer, let's, uh, let's get into it. So here's where stuff happens. Um, and this was the, this was the page today that uh, that showed me what was going on. Um, wow, this might be choppy according to OBS. How am I getting so little upstream? Whatever. Um, what I was trying to do, and so let me actually open this post, right? So we can open this post here. Give it a second. What I wanted to do and what I've done in the past is just put like footnotes right there, right? Cause I want it, and then I wanted a little separation. The problem is when Hugo, Hugo builds this area of the footnotes and I dug in a little bit earlier to, um, let's open the Hugo directory. I dug in a little bit earlier to, nope. Uh, where is it, where is it, where, where is it? Layouts, default, 
single. So there's a single footer under partials, which I was hoping would have footnotes in it, but it does not. It is has nothing in it. Um, so when I was going through and looking at it, what I realized is this dot content block is all the content on the page and includes the footnotes. Um, and as far as I can tell, uh, it's not, it's not possible. I did a little research earlier. Um, so, and then I was like, Ooh, I should stream this. Um, but as far as I could tell earlier, it's not possible to edit this thing independently. Like there's not a template out there that like defines this. It just throws the structure out there. Um, you go footnotes change. Might as well just relook, right? Footnote styling from 2014. So somebody down here had this one's super interesting. Um, if you Scroll over, there we go, you can kind of see it. Uh, I've got the monitor giant so that y'all can see it. But this person made a really interesting one where he put margin notes um, in. And I think this is fantastic. Uh, so obviously there are ways to address and to move the footnotes. Um, this is kind of a long post. I haven't read through it yet because I'm gonna take a slightly different approach to it, I think. Um, I guess I really should read more through this. Um, let's skim it at least. Uh, so website name uses margin notes. Set of footnotes in the browser. The one is wide enough. You probably see them in this article. If you maximize your browser window, if you can't see them. You can try zooming out. If you're on mobile, smart fridge. There's probably no hope for you. Uh, Unbridled enthusiasm for footnotes. Why margin notes? Absolute positioning. Yeah, so. Yeah, see, with JavaScript, I don't really want to throw JavaScript in there. Move the footnotes to the bottom of the page and then put them next. Put them in the text links, whatever. Um, so this footnote container, I don't know. Uh, this approach is simple enough. Put side. Drawing inspiration. Magic ink, I don't know magic ink. Pretty a frustrating level of software interfaces motivated decades of research in HCI, yeah. I might want to read this. We'll leave this up. Uh, anyways, I kicked around a little bit and I didn't find a good way to break it out. So I'm just gonna do some CSS on it and then make it go. Uh, my amount of footnotes are rendered without resorting to JS. Here's the HTML that is output by default. Generated by a markdown. HTML render. Hugo doesn't touch it. Have Hugo rewrite the HTML before he writes to disk. If it was me, I just use CSS. Yeah, so it's it's unclear, but I keep it keeps looking like that's just what comes out. And I also I did some grepping around for it and didn't see it. So we're just gonna assume that that's the case for now. So what I found, right, is we started to look into inspect element, everybody's favorite. Um, so it took me, the first time I looked at this, I didn't notice this, but there's an HR right here. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of that because where I'm, what I want to have, and I'm going to play around with this kind of as we do it. Um, but let us find...
where is assets assets scss tail and then i'm gonna just do it in this one um so section footnotes and then Green. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm like targeting the right thing, right? So now there's this HR that's in here, and so I think with H with SCSS, if we just do for the horizontal rule, display none, I think that takes it out, right? Let's clear that so we can see it. Yeah. Oh, and so that's. Hmm. Okay, so now I want to see if I can actually... So I could put in footnotes manually each time, but I want to see if we can add the, add the text directly so that I don't have to... Because like right now, right in the post... Let's see if we can find the post page. Eh, it wouldn't be awful if I added footnotes. Actually, no, you know what? I'm done. Like, that's it. Uh, like, I'm cool adding footnotes there. And I could do... If I really wanted to, you could do that, right? That's cool. Um, oh, yeah, so actually, what I kind of what I wanted to do is... Nah, I do, I do. Let's see if we can actually make it happen because I want to get a little bit better spacing and I want to have this horizontal rule styled specifically for the footnotes, like make it like a smaller percentage or do something cool with it. Um, and I want a little more padding there and I don't want to have to like do this, right? Um, Maybe we center footnotes. I don't know. Uh, so let's see. I've never I've never added text with CSS before. Whoops. CSS. Add text. Add test. Using CSS to enter text. Using CSS to generate text. Ah, Mozilla Docs. However, there's situations where it makes sense to specify certain content as part of the style sheet, not as part of the document. Ref before bold reference something to reference something. Okay. CS can insert text content before or after an element. To specify this, make a rule and add before or after the selector. If the, in the declaration, specify the content property. Character style sheet is UF, UTF-8 by default. Individual characters can be specified by skip. Okay, cool. Oh, so you can add a crown. Cool. Oh, I didn't think about that. We could do cool stuff. Uh, so add an image before or after an element. You can specify the URL. Okay. Oh, well, that's cool. Later talk with this. So that's super straightforward. I really should just read through all the Mozilla docs. That would be a cool thing to do. No nope. contents with specified in the style sheet does not become part of the DOM. Okay. Ooh, that's interesting. Huh. That's very interesting. Thoughts. Uh, so there's the double bef two colons and before and two colons after. Okay, so let's see if we can target it. So we've got ooh, ooh, ooh. wrong sublime text. So we're going to go back to here. Let's move you over here. And let's come back in here and inspect this element again. So here's what we got. So we've got that HR. We've got this ordered list. 
where do we want to have it? Um, let's put it after the HR. I have no idea if this is going to work. So wait, what did you do? Content. It exploded. Let's look at this doc again. Before. After. Content reference. It's on the display none. Let's take that out for a minute. Reference. Ooh, look at that. That's interesting. Not at all what I want. Oh, after goes in it. So what if we do this? Why did that work? Section. Oh, right, right, because we're not doing this. Hmm, thought that would work. There it is. So, oh, okay, so that time it goes after it for real. So we gotta do. So we can do the, okay, I think I got this. HR, we're gonna do display none. Actually, I'm not gonna mess with that yet. We're gonna do this first. Uh, which is, we're gonna go to the ordered list before content. And we might as well change it to say footnotes. Footnotes. Now, can we style it? Nope. I mean, we can obviously style it here because we're in the style sheet. Um, uh, I don't know how to make things italics or emphasized. Um, that work? Nope. Okay. Uh, so if we've got this here, we're at this before. Blue. Did it go blue? I feel like their stuff did this and my stuff is not. Oh, maybe just color. Let's try doing the right thing. Blue. Uh, so padding. So let's drop this. Yeah, this is one of those things like part of me is like, ah, I don't want to leave that stuff in there, but like It'll be okay. So, padding top 10 pixels. Eighty pixels. I broke something. Why 
Why can't I push it down? That way. Am I doing something silly? Okay, so that worked. Let's try the same thing here. No, it does not work. That's really weird. Maybe that's because it doesn't connect it to the DOM somehow, but I mean, it dropped in. Whatever, we'll hack it this way. Oh, but it's in the OL. Uh, rough. Um... Oh, and the HR, it's putting it inside the HR. Okay, I got it. Oh, crap. Um, all right, we're, we're close. No, I actually don't want them. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for... Font style, that's what I'm looking for. No italics, is it? Boop. All right, let's see what that does. Footnotes. See, that's good. I just want... Oops, 30. But how, wait, 20? There you go, okay, that's good. Um, hmm. I want more space between those two things. So I guess you could do the first It's weird that that doesn't do anything. Oops. Uh oh. So we put it here, right? It'll. Well, you just it would push it to the bottom. Whatever. It's fine. So we want to look at. O L L I. How do we get the first? CSS item. First child. Sounds delightful. Padding top thirty picks. There we go. I wish that was over. There's not, because you can't put it in the HR. We've only got so many places we can work with and Because if we put it after the HR, it puts it inside the HR because it's a single thing. Like it's an like an HR is an open and a close, so it it's actually putting it inside in, in the in the between in the in, in the inside in the underground. Um, well, before that's just the space of it. Um, well, I guess. 
so what you could do and i'm this is i'm not this into it um i don't think is you could drop the ol back so that the so that it doesn't have a margin and then leave that before there and then for the line items you could push them back over that would probably work i i don't know that i want to spend that much time on it i'm going to give it a shot for just a few minutes um Actually, you know what I'm going to do? So where does that... Here's this HR. So let's style that HR. HR CSS. Let's see what else we got. Simple styles. Let's see what CSS has tricks. CSS is, 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 is tricks. Uh, code. I kind of like this. I don't like that. Ooh, that's interesting. Style 8, which I think is just... So, overflow visible for IE. Padding. If we just do, oh, HR after, this is interesting. Why is there only one thing there? Whoop, look at that. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. Man, I like that. Uh, padding top 20 pixels. Let's push them down just a little bit, right? There we go. Oh, this is gonna, no, it's only gonna be there for footnotes. So this only shows up if there are footnotes. That's awesome. I really like this. Okay. See, working with what we got. 32. Let me actually back this off so I can see what it's gonna look like for real. Thirty-eight. Hey, forty-two. There we go. I really like that. Now, how do we make it less white? Medium, double, all this stuff, inline stuff. Um, what color do we want to use? E, A, B, C, C. What's that going to give us? Okay, I like this. And footnotes is okay over here. I'm okay with that now that we got that separation. Oops. I really like this. Uh, we can bring footnotes up a little bit closer, which is this one. I'm gonna take that away. Oh, we got one closer. Padding top. Padding. Uh, four. Oh well. HR. Section. So it's that HR. We wanna. 
That's not awful right there, but I want it up just a little bit higher. So the OL has some padding up top still. Padding top, it says right there. Oh no, that's for the first child. That's to get this before margin bottom. That doesn't actually do anything. That just move up. Is that just me? I don't know, but I'm looking. Uh, yeah, no, I like it there. I don't know if it actually moved or not. That may just be putting the second set of eyes on it, but that's pretty good. I really like that. Mm, a little more, a little, a little closer. And this is just the, the fiddly part, but like. Yes, two pixels makes a difference. I like it. Okay, that's gonna be good. I may fiddle with that, but that's uh, that's solid. That's what I'm going to go with. I may, yeah, at some point, oh, let me see if I can pull that up just a little bit. What happens if I take this out? What happens? Oh, interesting. Ooh, so you can do that. That's cool. <gasps> Wait a minute, can you go on the other side? That was padding. How do you? I would love to have it like start here. All right, I'm getting too much in this. This is fine. This is fine for now. Oh, I really like that. That is sharp. I really am digging the look of this. Like, I really like the look of this. Hmm, good stuff. I did basically none of that. I made these colors slightly different. That was my contribution. That's just, that's good looking. It's good looking. Cool. That'll do that. Uh, let's shed Alan prod. Get add. Get commit. Update footer to be awesome looking. All right, and so let's grab this. Put that here. Oops. New style. We're gonna put this right here. What do you call this? CSS just to get it going. Cool. So now, yeah, that's cool. All right, that was thing one, check. Thing two. Uh, automatically moving screenshots into my directory structure, which is gonna be at 34 minutes and 20 seconds where we automatically move screenshots into my directory structure. Okay, so what we have here is, uh, oops, I guess I can move that back down there and we can move it back up to the size that looks good on the screen. Oops, maybe not. There we go. Yeah, it's giant. Oh, it looks good, it looks so good. Look at that, it's beautiful. Um. So I take a lot of screenshots and I guess I should prep and look at the screenshots that I've shot. Let me do that real quick. I just wanna make sure we're cool with everything that's in the screenshots directory. I think it's all fine, but like sometimes I have screenshots of, um, uh, holding, screenshots holding. I didn't 
spell that right at all, but that's okay. All right, so let's put that there. Renamed. Nope. Incoming. Stand by. I did not prep for this particularly well. Uh, whoops. That one crashes out hard. This one comes in hard. Screenshots, 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 screenshots. So, uh, if we take a screenshot, uh, whatever, of this, this will get all meta. Actually, we should probably do something that isn't super confusing, like that, whatever. Uh, so this is built into Apple's OS to take these screenshots. And the way that it does it is drops it into a particular directory. By default, it's the desktop, which I don't think makes any sense at all. So I ran a command that throws it into the screenshots directory. But it still does this, where this is the naming convention that it uses. Which is, I like the fact that the date is in reverse order, or is in ISO order, 20, 2020, October 12th, right? 10, 12. Um, and it has leading zeros in there. What's a bummer is the it uses AM, PM. So if you're sorting these um, and trying to find, for example, the last screenshot that you took and you took one at whatever, uh, 9 a.m. and then you took another one at 11 a.m., the 11 a.m. one shoots up to the top. And so you're looking at the bottom for it because it's the most recent one and it feels like it should be at the bottom, but it's at the top. Also, it's just not my naming convention. Um, I've got a naming convention that I set up uh, that I really like that, you can, that you'll actually see here in just a second because I built the first part of this. Um, so rename screenshots. And this should, let's actually open PyCharm on this. Ooh, I moved it. I wonder if it's gonna explode. Uh, PyCharm. Open. Whoa. Try this. You can't see it because it's upstairs. Uh, we're going to open toolkit. Rename screenshots. Go. New window. Did all kinds of craziness. So I specifically didn't write this with. How are those both still there? Standby. Toolkit. Scratch pad. Nope. Nope. Yep. They are both there. 735 bytes, one kilobyte. What? What is this? Such a weird thing. Find relative path. Rename screenshots. Oh, I actually built it out as a separate module. Okay, yeah, I was kind of experimenting with where I, how I was gonna build stuff out. Um, screenshot, rename, so rename screenshots. Do the rename, do the rename. I think if I just run, okay, we're just gonna run this. So I've just got a test file in there. We're not gonna hurt anything. Um, so the question is, where is it going to go? I don't remember where I put the paths in. Okay, input dir. Yeah, we got this hard coded because why not? Um, like this is just going to be a tool that just kind of runs in general. Um, so users LNS screenshots. which is here, which is also here. And then screenshots renamed. I'm gonna change this slightly. 
So what I'm going to do, actually, we're going to go ahead and get this set up. We're going to change that to a lowercase i. Uh, yep. And then we're just going to go output to screenshots. So here's what's supposed to happen is if we take this screenshot and we put it in here with that uh, default name, and then we come to our command line and we go rename screenshots. So F means found. I was doing this when I was trying to troubleshoot some stuff. So it found our screenshot and then two, or sorry, it's from, F is from, T is two, and then screenshots directory. So it makes a 2020 directory, it makes a 10 October directory, and then there's the actual file name. Um, so screenshots, 2020, October, there we go. Uh, Cause I shoot a lot of screenshots or I take a lot of screenshots. Um, I think when I first was doing this, I had like 5,000 in my screenshots directory. Um, so it's, I wanted to figure out kind of how to uh, group them because I don't want them all just sitting in the directory, like in the main one. Um, I guess you could keep them there and then move them out slowly but surely. Hmm, uh, that's for a future enhancement. Right now, we're just gonna get the first part of it wired up. Um, but so what I want to have happen now is when screenshots hit this directory, I want to automatically trigger that. Because right now I have to, like if I go, whatever, take a screenshot. Um, one, I need to change it, which we can do right now, where instead of showing up here, it moves into the incoming directory. But it still doesn't do anything. So I need to set up um, a process to watch that directory. And when it sees a file hit there, to run the process. Um, and so that's what we're gonna do here in just a minute. Um, the first one we're gonna do is uh, screenshot directory. Um, themes, screenshot hotkeys and options. Oh yeah, you can do it by the command line. Main hotkey, full shortcuts, this is old. <laughs> 2011. Um, but here's how you change. I'm going to just, that's a very old note. We're going to make sure that that's still legit. Um, Apple change screenshot directory. Twenty eighteen seems close enough. Oy, that graphic is not high res. Open a new finder window. Command shift in to create a new folder. This will keep it hit command one, make sure it's in grid mode. Spotlight terminal. Ignore the quotation marks, making sure. Make sure to enter the space at the end after location. Oh, you can drag and drop onto the terminal. I, that's cool. I just want to see what all that they say, but that's the same. If you delete that folder, you're gonna have problems. I think it actually just bounces back to the uh, watch my thing. But is that the same right screen capture location? Yep. Uh, cool. So, screen. Whoops. Screenshots incoming. So that's the directory we want to go to. As of this, still works. Oops. Of course, I may have just jinxed it, but um, boop. Now, actually, did that thing say to kill? Now your screenshots will appear in this folder. I think you have to kill something to make that happen. At least you used to. 
Uh, we're gonna find out right now. So uh, I'm gonna take a screenshot of something. Whatever. Boop. All right, let's see where it goes. Uh oh, didn't go anywhere. That's bad. Uh, nope, not there either. <laughs> Whoops. One more screenshot. I think I took one. I thought I heard it go. I didn't see it show up over here either. I may have goofed it. Watch me never be able to take screenshots again. All right, I'm gonna, we're gonna Google this command. Note that the parents have worked in the past. You'll need to re -log in the re -log in or run this for it to take effect. All right, I just want to Google this command. Again, this is a very old note. Yeah, 2016. It's always weird messing around with like the internal stuff. Yeah, kill all finder. Ditto, huh. Cover the contents of a folder from one place to another. It's a CPR, basically, but that's cool. I know there's a ditto command. Hey, AC URL. Curl, whatever. Change the file. Screenshot, yeah. Disable the drop shadow on the screenshot, yeah. There you go, kill all. Yeah, whatever, we're gonna try it. All right, now what happens if we take a screenshot? Oh, it came back, you can't see it, but it's down the corner. And survey says, hooray! <laughs> we didn't totally bork it. Out of three, yep, that's it. Cool. Uh, Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go make a little launch D script that watches that directory. And when it sees something change in that directory, it's going to fire off the script um, to, to run the process basically. Cause the, everything in that script is designed. So I wrote it so that Python two can use it, um, which is the system Python and I hard coded the paths in there so that it should be able to be run from anywhere. So a launch D script should be able to fire this thing off. Um, and watch directories. Yeah. So here's an example. Um, so label, we're going to give it a label here. Let's start running this up here, which, uh, here, let's use VS code. Why not? Uh, new untitled file, untitled file. Uh, cool. Second viewer. Yeah, look at that. Probably I should make this font bigger. Wow, that's a lot of uh, settings. Okay, did it work? Oop. Yes, it did. We're gonna maybe back off that just a little bit and see what 20 looks like. Cause I'm trying to get, yeah, about 24 or five lines of text. Um, seems like it's a good, good thing. 
Uh, so we're gonna do com dot Alan W Smith dot uh, screen. What's the name of the file that we're doing? Screen share rename. Rename screenshots. I don't know how this one is in my Groovy playlist. Whatever, change it up a little bit. Rename screenshots.p list. Program. Uh, and this is so weird because, like, I swear you don't actually need that half the time. User bin Python. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Here, let's actually. Which Python user local? Uh, is that really the thing? Hmm, interesting. I didn't know it was in user local bin. Okay, we put it there. That's uh, no problem. User local bin Python. And then. Toolkit, screenshot, nope, 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 nope. Toolkit, rename screenshots, rename screenshots. I'm not sure if this is the right way to do this with, uh, with the arguments here. I'm gonna put that in quotes just to see what happens. So that first one I was doing was firing off a, um, Watch my thing, an Apple script. Screenshots incoming. PwC grabs it, it's a little thing that I wrote. And we wanna watch that directory. And get rid of those. Now we're gonna save this, oops. Uh, save this as, let's maybe see all of this, please. Here, it's gonna go into our library, which is here. Our launch agents, which is here. And our file name, which is this. Okay, ooh, the marketplace has extensions. Okay, not right now. And so now what we need to do, launch D, start. I can't remember, start a process. It's launch control. Review examples. Start, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna rename this. Start, restart, and reload. Launch DP lists. So that reloads, oh, I should have renamed it launch agents. Um, we'll do that real quick. Uh, bah, 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 bah. So let's do this. I want to close it in VS Code because I don't want it open in two places. Because we're going to go into library launch agents. And we're going to move com Alan W. Smith. Oh, the other one didn't have it. Yeah, it's fine. 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 Um, but so in here.
Well, next, eh, that's fine, whatever. Um, launch control, load, right? Yeah, this is good. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, what am I doing? Screen. So we want to load that, which will put it in activity. Sweet. Uh, how do you see... Line bash overview. How do you see? See what's running. Because we can just verify. Ooh, all kinds of stuff is going. Uh, rename. Oh. Let's do grep. There you go. Okay, so it's working. All right, so now if we make a screenshot of the screenshots, it took it. I can see it down here in the corner. It's going to throw it up into this incoming directory. And nothing's going to happen. That's a bummer. Console. All right, I'm gonna actually throw this over the side just cause I don't know what all is gonna be in there. And see if I can figure out why that didn't go. I'm gonna take another one. Okay. So this is what we got. That's not what we got. This is what, there we go. This is what we got. Service exited with abnormal code two. Bummer. So maybe we did need that. Uh, watch directories. directories. Maybe we didn't need this. Probably shouldn't have taken it out until I need that. And you know, just gone with the example. Sometimes, I swear sometimes though you don't. So I don't know. We'll figure out what actually is going on here. It's also interesting that the program has that and then it has OSA script. Yeah, I, I remember this being weird. Uh, sublime text. Com, Alan Smith, rename. Let's put this back in. And I still don't like the kind of syntax where it's like key string, but there's no, it's not a wrapper. Like there should be something wrapping these. So that's all kind of one bundle, um, but that ain't how it works. Uh, all right, let's try this. And then let's just try this.
Program, program arguments. Okay, let's... Let's try that. And now we go back here and we do our reload. So, yeah, well, we're just it this way. Unload, unloaded. Reload, reloaded. There's a directory. Screenshot. It's still working. I see it over here. Now it's there. I don't see an error. I also don't see it working. Nothing happened. One more time. Nothing in the logs. Maybe that's progress? All right, let's go all the way back and do it the old fashioned way. This is pretty close to what we had Unload, load, screenshot, there it is, there it is, oh come on, why isn't this working? Exited with abnormal code 2. Um, that's a bummer. Why isn't that working? That's an example is watch. Open a folder, watch pad. So string, yeah, see this one. with the watch paths would just open the thing. Now, of course, this was five years ago, so, but still. Um, what's the way, so Python dash C, right? Runs a command. Command. Specify the command to be executed. This terminates the options list. Following options are passed to the iron command. So Python dash C print hello world. Okay. Oh, well, where am I going to print it to? Um, Okay, so which bash? What I'm trying to do is figure out where, how to just make sure that when it sees something happen, it fires something off. Like I want to make sure I'm I'm watching the directory properly and get a structure that works. But why didn't that? See, this is for doing it on the command line itself. Actually. Whoops. E. E. Oh, that's not helpful. 
Oh, well, there's no E. Okay. There is no E. Use the lookup in Python. Python. Program, program arguments. All right, we're just going to try. I don't remember what. Okay, so should start keeping track of what we try. Um, we can just do this part. I'm going to call this test one because I don't remember what the other things we did were. But so this is, well, so let's start with this. So this, and then as an argument, this. Well, shit. Problem is, it doesn't work. Oh, maybe I am running Python 3 for that. Hang on. <laughs> oh my god. Python 3 is a thing, right? Uh, exit. Exit, exit, exit. That's there we go. Which Python three? Okay. Let's see if this makes sense. This is this feels like this should work, right? It's assuming this works. Ta-da! Ooh, so we should turn off. The outputs. Actually, why not? We'll see where the output goes. I don't know if that's going to go to the log or not. Um, it'd actually be kind of cool if it did. Oh, uh, yeah. Python 3.7 tells me right here. Um, all right. Hey, let's try this again. Step one, make sure it works. The command works before you put the command in the thing. Uh, where am I going? Where am I going? Where am I going? I'm going here. Nope. I'm going here. Where's my launch control? Here, let's do this. Oh, there it is. Unload it. Oh, I was going to come right back. Reload. Okay. Nothing, so we just ran it, so it cleared the directory because it, it looks at the full directory and everything, everything's there. I'm not trying to just pick one file out. Um, so there's all of our stuff so far. So we're going to look at, actually, here, just do this. Let's look at incoming. There's incoming. Here, whatever. So now we should see it. If it works and it fires, it'll make a 2020 directory, an October directory, and then a new directory. Um, actually, I want to see it work this way. Uh, what am I doing? Oh, I wish there was a way to get in front of copy and paste. So that you knew what it was up front. Because if you you control C either way, and then it depends on what you do after control C that it determines whether or not you copy or paste, but it's easy to when you're trying to pay to cut to cut to only copy. If that makes sense. So copy the files instead of move the files. It's frustrating. So there's the two directories. Let's see what happens. Let's get all that junk in there too. Why not? Survey says. All right, so I see it has taken the screenshot. There it is in the incoming. Oh, come on, you can do it. And see, the thing is, it didn't error.
Okay. So now we're gonna try this again. Which still, I don't get if this works. And I'm actually gonna try this two different ways. If So if this works, we'll count that as a win. Let's do it. There's a screenshot. Come on. Exit abnormal code too. Not helpful at all. Okay, so we should start testing this again. Here, we're gonna go for real this time. All right. I don't remember what we did there. So this doesn't work. Did not work. So now we're gonna try this. Screenshot. Move the screenshot in. Exited with abnormals code. Ah, whoops. Should have pasted that. Did not work. You can do this with Automator. Like, I know how to do this with Automator, but like, I want the launch D scripts. Let's see, Python launch D. When all this fails, let's see who has done it already. Uh, label, let's see program arguments. Wait. Wait, did I still have program in there or did I take program out? Oh, see, I took program out. Are the quotes screwing with it? Oh, that's gonna suck if the if it's the quotes. Cross your fingers, folks. It would be sweet if this works. Screenshots taken. Incoming. Oh, there it goes. Ugh, quotes. I suppose that argument gets quoted as it's passed down. And the quotes were messing with it. That's frustrating. We got it though. And we've got an updated. What's that? Bye bye.
yeah, I was just trying to automate her directly, but I don't like that. Like, it's just feels a little bit weird. As of date, this works. Make sure you don't put that even up top. Nope. Make. Make. Make sure you don't put quotes around the file path, around the scripts file path. It'll break. So that's how you do a launch D script, which is super cool. Um, and now that I've got that, it won't take nearly as long to do it the next time. Like the quotes, the quotes, the quotes, the quotes, the quotes. Yeah, so it quotes the whole thing, and then you can put quotes into it still apparently. But like when I try, uh, so I got ahead of myself a little bit because like generally on the command line, I put quotes around paths even if there's no, like it just as a habit, even if there's no um, spaces in there, just cause get in the habit. And so I put it around there and it went. So now we know that would have only taken two minutes. <laughs> ah. That happens sometimes. All right, so let's add that into here. Lesson. Don't put quotes around paths in launch D scripts. It makes them explode. XPLOD. All right, I'll clean that up later. That's good for now. All right. Here we go. Uh, next up. One hour, 18 minutes and 30 seconds. Making a link grabber for pages that I visit every day. So I've got a tool that's set up right now or a command that's set up that I wrote that uses an Apple script to grab all of the open tabs in Safari and uh, runs it through a Python script, or sorry, you fire a Python script, the Python script runs an Apple script that grabs all the tabs and grabs all the URLs from all the tabs and all the titles from the tabs. Passes that back to um, Python, which does some cleanup of them and then spits them out into a file. Uh, I do that for uh, show notes, for stream notes. So the stream notes that you see at the end uh, of all the posts come from that. What I was thinking is it would actually be kind of interesting and nice to just run that script throughout the day uh, and just gather links for the day, throughout the day, um, and then post those and just have like this kind of neat trail history of like, here's the stuff that I did over time and all the pages that I went to. Um, I think it would just be interesting like and neat. Uh, it would also help because like, Occasionally it's like, I, I remember that like, oh, I, I saw this page with a snippet of code on it three days ago or four days ago or five days ago. I can't remember how many days ago, but I still, I can't find it, but I know I would like to see it now because I can't remember the syntax or whatever. I'd have all the links. So, um, and you, there's different ways you could do that. And like there's history and all the other stuff, but just like, I like this kind of idea. I think it's gonna be interesting to see. Um, the, I will of course, look at all the links before I post them to make sure I'm not posting something like, you know, work. Um, and what I'll do over time is I'll filter out the work links. So like I'll, I'll put filters in place to start with that block all the work URLs um, or prevent them from showing up. I think I'm gonna get most of them, but I probably won't get all of them. So over time, I'll, I'll basically, it's it's not gonna be a fully automated process because I wanna vet the URLs and make sure I'm not like, you know, leaking work information, um, but still be interesting. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, also, I'm just gonna follow this guy because even though he wasn't really the help, it was helpful. 
Um, feed, GitHub, Twitter. Here you go, Twitter. Hey, he made his font different. Oh, he's a pen tester. Nice. Um, and let's see if his oh, feed, look at that. Feed burner. I thought feed burner was gone. Uh, copy, copy, copy link. Um, so that's that's what we're gonna mess with. Um, add that. Finding feed. It was literally a feed burner link. You can do it. Come on. It's probably loading everything else right now. Okay, whatever. We'll let that go. Um, so the first thing to do is to find. Oh wow, that stayed up top. Uh, I did some launch D reloads. Um, see it show up. See it show up. See it show up. Zoop. Ah, that's so nice. Uh, next, I can drop these back in now because they're here. Even though those are all not so. Close that. Rename. We can close that because I move those over. There we go. So now I got my structure. Hooray. Um, so where is the script originally? So it's in my toolkit, which is new, and it's a Safari URL puller, which I always spell S-A-R, Safari. Uh, so if I run this, which I think it should run on the system without any, oh, wait, 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 actually. Can you open PyCharm? Nope. Uh, I'll figure out a command for that at some point. So there's my screenshot renamer, which is good. At some point, I really should roll that over to just being Python 2, but it doesn't matter, it works. There's a scratch pad, there's my red green test. Open project, toolkit, Safari URL puller, go. New window. Uh, let's see, Python 3, okay. So if I run this, so I just deleted this link details MD file. So if I run this, It's going to Safari right now. Looking at all the tabs that are open, all the windows that are open and all the tabs and all the windows, grabbing the URLs and grabbing the titles, passing all that back to Python. Python's doing some magic with it and spitting out uh, the markdown file. So there's a markdown file there now, right? So if we look at that markdown file, here's, oh, HR, that's interesting. Um, I'm kind of surprised that you can put that in a title. Um, interesting. But so this is just uh, and actually what we can do. Oh yeah, look at that. He's got the font hanging out there. Um, let's actually put it where we can see it. Where's our stream notes? So these are our stream notes. Links from the stream. And now if we go back and look at our street nope, let me find the three notes. You go over here so we can see you. Localhost, stream notes. So it just produces all this. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's the horizontal rule that freaked it out. Wait, no, there's a horizontal rule. What is going on? Simple styles for, there's a lot of HR stuff going in there. We're gonna just fix those. There we go. Um, so it just makes this list. And so, and then it alphabetizes it, it cleans some stuff up. It drops out all my local host uh, URLs that you can't get to and my launch pad that you can't get to because it's only on my machine. So it does some, some basic cleanup. So the script's basically written, not basically it is. But so what I'm thinking what I can do is fire this thing off at intervals. So again, using a launch D process 
to fire it off at intervals and collect all the links. And so the first thing would be, so, cause there's a couple things that I would need to do. Um, the first thing is like, I need, I need to figure out if I want to make this a separate script or not. And I think to start with, I'm just going to make it a separate script, just so I can mess with, like separation of concerns, basically. Um, so that I don't have to worry too much about it because some of the stuff that I want to do with this one, like the core is the same, but like I need to like dedupe. Well, it already dedupes links, ah, but it needs to dedupe links over time. Regardless, I, like it's a new thing. I'm going to separate it out because this thing, uh, like I'm considering this current one as in production. So I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to go to development which really just means another file, right? Because I don't have, like, there's not like a dev server and a prod server here. It's just development is another thing. And it's going to be another thing. So we're going to do that. Um, let's start with that. Oh, yeah. So you can also see, whatever, there's that many links, even though there's that many tabs. Because somewhat, like, it also filters out Google's resu uh, search results pages. Because the search result page isn't what you're after. You're after the thing. But maybe in the new one, I'll actually keep the search results out there to show what I was searching for. Ooh, that's actually interesting. I may put that back in here, too. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do that. That's cool. I'll do that later. Um, I'll, I'm going to do this first. I guess that's a better way to say that. So let's go to PyCharm. And we're going to make a new project. Okay, so this is going to be um, browser. What's a good name for this? <laughs> Naming things is hard, especially at night at when it's getting kind of tired. Um, uh, Safari. URL watcher, URL puller. I'm just going to spend a few seconds on this and I'm just going to pick one and go because I don't want to get stuck in it. Um, URL watcher, URL archiver. URL archiver. Sweet. A R C H I V E N. Yeah, that sounds good. Whatever. New window. Is there a way? Default git ignore. I didn't spell any of that right. How to get ignore idea files. Um, these get ignore and high charm. Go to settings, go to plugin, search for dot ignore, install, restart project on, get ignore should now be included, and dot ignore. Wait, what? Go to settings, go to plugin, search for ignore, install, restart PyCharm. Get ignore should now be included in dot ignore along with. Huh? Just want to look at this real quick. I'll see if we can solve something here. Um, Oh, wow, still installing. Yeesh, what's going on? Because uh, it'd be nice to have a git ignore already set up in here instead of having to make one. Um, settings, plugins. Never been here before. Whoa, what is dot ignore? Uh, is a plugin for git ignore all this other stuff. <laughs> Ten point eight million. Git ignore templates filtering for selecting and rules. Uh, all right, I don't know what this is gonna do. 
I think they're probably polarized. Maybe, yeah, 10 million people do it. Why not? Restart IDE. Restart. Give this just a minute. I just want to see if I can solve this one. Also, my eye edges. I don't know what's going on. PyCharm says done in the logs. Opening lots of stuff. I think it's still open. Yeah, it's doing all kinds of craziness. I'm actually going to close some of these. Get rid of there. I keep Scratchpad open. URL Archiver, that's what we're working on. Safari Polo is what we're going to do. Okay. Whatever. Okay. Uh, I'll play with that later. That was a detour. Um, See, so I just want to do... So I can uh good lord. Uh and then get in it. There's probably ways to do this in PyCharm that I'm not familiar with. Um So we're just going to copy over a bunch of stuff is really the first start of this. Um, oh, well, I guess I probably, can you actually, can you drag between uh, windows and PyCharm if you can see them? Move the file search. No, don't move. Don't move. Copy, copy, copy. We're just going to do that in the finder. Uh, okay, we can close that. Uh, okay, so most of the, yeah, so here's all the changes that happen. Um, and it's pulling, so basically uh, this, this should work, right? So, um, but we want to rename this to This always gets me with the directory structure because it's URL archiver and then the command would be archive URLs. It always feels a little bit weird to, I don't know. I mean, that that feels like the right way to do it, but. Um, test.
has StarCraft URLs. If we run this, what happens? Everything explodes. Module archive URLs has nothing called get description. Say what? Did I not? We actually don't do get description anymore. Why is that in there? I'm not pulling descriptions because it was a. Uh, Said Anaconda. See you with Anaconda. Okay, I don't know about that. Get description. Yeah, I don't. I took all the get description stuff out. I don't know why this is. Um, Because the descriptions were just too messy and long, and they weren't helpful. All right, what's this do? There you go, passes. Uh, I don't stream Java backend. Uh, I've used Java about six times in my life. Um, so it would be a very ugly stream if I tried to stream that. Uh, right now, Python's kind of where my head's at. So. That's uh, that's the language du jour or whatever. Sounds delicious. Um, do you uh, are you a Java person? I take it or just interested in it? Uh, let's see what we got going on here. All right, so this pulls. Whoops. Yeah, so there's all the things that drops. Um, however, I'm going to leave Google searches in there. But I don't need stuff off my local host, and I don't need stuff off my personal site. Um, so I've got that. So what I need to do is... Well, the first thing I should do is just run this and see if it works, and it's... Um, Java Spring. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I just I I played with Java way back, um, but never never dug into it. Um, I did script stuff way back in the day, and then now uh, Python is is kind of what I do. I don't I don't actually spend a tremendous amount of time coding. Um, I spend more time coding on stream than I do actually for the gig, uh, but it's. I'm kind of focused on Python right now just to try it. Like, I'm still getting my head around it, basically. Um, you know, how to test work in Python, how to classes work and all that jazz. So it's uh, it's it's been fun, though. I like it. It's uh, Have you ever played with Python? Um, and do you like it? Do you hate it? How, what do you think about Java, I guess, is another question. Um, do, you, do you dig it? Or is it like one of those that you're not as big a fan of? Because I know people who've gone who really love it, and I've known some people who work with it who aren't as big a fan of it, so. Uh, let's see. So the first thing to do is to run this and see if it just works like this. Made a file for us. There you go. There's the links. Okay. So that works. Uh, okay, so now how do we want to approach this? Because I want to get... So the thing's going to run on a cycle. Which means... And I don't want to have to eliminate dupes manually. So what I'm thinking I'll do is... When the process runs, it'll do two things. It'll... it'll well, so it should read a JSON object that has the existing set of links in it. Read the tabs, dedupe across those two things, do an output to the, the archive page, and then also re-output re the JSON object with, the, with any updates 
to to the storage location um and that way i can do the the dedupe at that point um or i can do the dedupe that way and not have to to do it manually and that that'll store kind of store the data for me um serene tug Yeah, so I that was the one thing that had me super interested in Java was the strongly typed stuff, because I've never really done strongly typed stuff, and I can really see the appeal to it of like this thing, like it's this, and it is only this, and you touch it with anything else, and it you know catches on fire. Um, that said, I also really like the Python kind of thing of like the duck typing or whatever I think they call it, where it's just like you you can throw something at an object with a call and if it can respond to the call, then it responds to the call, regardless of what's back there or like whether it's what the rest of its shape is. Um so like I'm not like I'm 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 not religious about anything of this kind of stuff. Uh, and that's, that's one of them, but I, so I can, I can definitely see the appeal and it's, I enjoy the idea of playing in all those worlds. Um, and then seeing kind of where the strengths are and the, and the, or the, the parts I like more, not necessarily strengths, but the, or strengths sometimes, but the, the parts that I like and the parts that I'm less fond of. Um, like for example, I was messing around today. One of the things that's always bugged me about Python is, um, uh, where's code runner? Uh, let's see. Yeah, your first language is JavaScript. I've never used TypeScript. Like, so I did a bunch of JavaScript stuff way back before it became like heavy JavaScript stuff. Oh, your front end. Oh, nice. Um, the language far surpassed me in terms of the, I just didn't keep up with it. Um, and then TypeScript and I think there's some others that are kind of like TypeScript maybe, but those came out and I just, I haven't been in that world since they came out. So I'm one of the things I'm going to be doing on these streams is experimenting around with languages um, and, and working on things. Cause I'm mainly, I'm just curious to see how they go. Um, so I'm, I'm, but TypeScript is definitely one of those. I, my initial reaction is a little bit like, why wouldn't you just write JavaScript? But I recognize that that's, you know, whatever, just my having not used TypeScript. So I want to, I, I don't want to, I don't want to write off anything before I've tried it basically. Um, and that's TypeScript is definitely one of those that my initial reaction was like, I don't understand why we would do that, but I haven't used it. So I'm not going to understand until I try it. So, um, JavaScript six. Yeah. Right on, uh, ECMAScript next. I don't know what ES next is. What is ES next? Dun, dun, dun. It's ECMAScript, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Nullish coalescing operator. Promise. Yeah, see, I've never really done stuff with promises. Hey, big int. Global this. Wow, I'll have to. I don't have enough. I need examples. Like, these are great descriptions, I'm sure, but like, I need code. Flat, flat map, puppetries. Yeah, so, I mean, I did JavaScript in the 90s. So, like, it has changed dramatically uh, since I first started it. And, like, it, I just didn't keep up with all the changes. Like, I don't remember. And, like, there was all the browser wars stuff and, and all that jazz. Um, so, it, it was, uh, I, I'm out of touch with that, but one of the, I'm, I'm getting into it more with the streams. Um, but anyways, one of the thing, one of the things I found with Python today, as a matter of fact, is it, I always struggled with the fact that I, I hadn't discovered a way or I hadn't found the way to pass named parameters 
explicitly so that you could only have those name parameters and couldn't pass anything else. And then today I found a post that was talking about it and it's basically putting this little asterisk in front of it. So you can only send A, B, and C to that. I'm gonna test this a little bit more, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Um, so it's again, it's kind of like messing with the languages to see uh, to see what's up. Nice. Yeah, I'll, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to play with it. It's, so I'm, the thing that I'm doing right now is working with Django. Like I'm, I'm moving my little internal tool site over to Django just cause it's Python. I've been using Python a lot recently. I want to play with it. But then once I do that, I want to start playing with some of the other, um, some of the other JavaScript languages and JavaScript, JavaScript frameworks, um, to see like, again, I'll, I, so I've done some angular at the office but mostly what I've done is work with other people's code and not really do that much myself. So I don't have it in my head. Um, but it's, and I, I wasn't as big a fan of it, but some of that is I'm not, um, I didn't do it. So I don't like, I didn't get my head around it. And so when I'm in there kind of messing with it, um, it's just a little bit like, ah, I don't know about this. Oops. Trying to bring my chat back that I lost. There we go. Let's see if I can keep it up here now. Um, but yeah, so I'll, I'll definitely, I'll definitely be looking into that. I'm, I'm excited to really kind of be getting back into code. Um, is one of the big parts of it, and it's, it's fun. I'm enjoying the hell out of it. Um, all right, so we're gonna, so here's, here's, here's what we need to do. We need to figure out the best way and I'm starting to get tired. So this may, I may pull the plug on this here in a minute. Um, so we've got, so we're pulling the MD5 line. So where do we make the call out to, here's the call to the Apple script. Huh. Right. Um, did you do any of the Django stuff, or did you just kind of like say, "Nah, not not for me"? All right. So we've got the lines. We're calling out to the script. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, so I've got this code and this code works, but the first thing I'm gonna do is comment it all out and kind of start from scratch. Um, Cause I wanna get, like I'm doing a different thing and I'm gonna do it a different way. So I wanna, I've got all this as background and as reference, um, but we're gonna do, we're gonna do a different thing. Um, and then we're gonna comment out Actually, no, we're going to move this to a different file. <laughs> you read through the code. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's tough if you're not if you're not into a thing. It's just like, yeah, I will be OK. So and to me, it's like when you get down to it, it's like I once you've crossed a threshold, it's like I can give me a while with the documentation and I can figure out how to do the thing. So if I need to j jump into a thing, show me the docs and we'll, uh, we'll dig into it or show me some examples. Uh, it's something I, I really would like to see more of like solid cookbooks worth of stuff. Um, so what am I interested in? Um, that's a good question. The, so I, I used to do web stuff um, and used to, I mean, like I started in the late nineties uh, I started in the mid nineties actually, and then kept doing web stuff for years, but kind of slipped into like kind of more management management stuff. So right now my focus is really just getting back into coding, um, and, and making things. Uh, I do some stuff at work, not a tremendous amount. I'm starting to take on a little bit more, uh, coding stuff instead of just sitting in meetings and talking. And which I'm not knocking, like that's my job, but I also like really enjoy coding. So 
my my push right now is getting in is really getting into Python to do this Django stuff, and then from the Django stuff, I'll jump off and do whatever else. Like largely, I just want to be making stuff. Um, is the is the the foundation of it, um, and like doing these streams has been awesome because it's it gets me to do stuff instead of just thinking about it because it's like I'm on stream, I'm going to do a thing. Um, and also, I don't know if you've ever have you heard of rubber duck debugging. Where you like talk to an inanimate, inanimate object to help you debug stuff. I found the stream is a lot like that. So like I'll be working on a thing and I'll be talking out loud to describe what I'm doing to the stream, and it'll click differently in my head. And it's like, oh wait a minute, the thing that I just talked about. What if I do this? This is simpler. This is you know whatever. So it's a right now I'm just coding like, uh, and I'm interested in kind of doing it all. Ah, nice. Also, I need to figure out a better way to show my... Like, right now I'm showing the chat over here. I need to actually get it over on that side um, to make it easier to do. And I still need to be able to see it. Um, uh, all right, let's see what we got. So how do we want to do this? Um, and what I want to do too, I'm really focused on TDD right now. Or I'm really trying to work on tests and testing and test-driven development and testing first and all that jazz. Um, I don't always do it, but I'm using it as a practice right now, like as an exercise, trying to, like I've decided like now is the time, or for this time, I'm going to really do it and like go full in on it. So I'm gonna have, also have to figure out how to test this stuff that I'm trying to do. Um, we're gonna refactor this one to rename it. Original. And then we're gonna make this a new one, test. Archive URLs pi. I don't remember the syntax for this, so we're gonna do this. I'm gonna cheat just a little bit. So URL archive or test test pass if name. main unit test main which you actually don't need to do in PyCharm it just runs it anyways no tests were found all right let's do a tone test test tone uh, oh actually we can do this uh, PT Python tests yeah there we go hotkeys are awesome or shortcut keys, whatever. So now if we test that, we should see test one passed, sweet. All right, so how to test this is gonna be the question. Um, Cause I don't wanna test the system. Like I don't need to test the JSON calls and loading the JSON. Um, what is a good way to do this? So, Or test. And I don't need to do the full object. So what am I looking for? Um, I'm just gonna start with craziness. Um, so expected is just gonna be a full bore output like an integration test or an integration test, really. So that's gonna look like this, link one. Example.com. Link two. site.com all right so that's gonna fail right just to make sure it fails fails good okay so and then actual we're gonna do um, archive URLs 
final output or final output. Yeah, sure, why not? And now this is gonna blow up because we don't have that as a watch my thing. Oh, actually, we want to make this. I want to make this a class this time. Um, return. That's how you spell return. Whatever. We're gonna do that. So. We've got archive URL, so let's do def setup setup uh, UA real tide is that dot that I think is that how that works? Still gonna explode, right? Because we're not. Archive URLs. Nope. So we want to do UA. And that's going to explode because it's not the right. UA is not defined. Uh, oh, what do you have to do? Global? Is that how this works? Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's at least talking to it. Now, just to test it, so we're going to do uh, what Sandy Metz calls shameless green. Just paste that right there. Test passed. Okay. So there's our target. Um, oh, shit. Sweet. Can I show this? You put the link in chat. I'm pretty sure it's fine. I'm gonna keep it over there until you say it's fine to show. Um, okay, cool. Also, Google trash is changing. So, hooray. Spring stuff, hibernate, yeah, look at this. So you like Udemy, you, you Demi? I don't know how to say that. Oh, I did. I actually went through some ahead first. I've got that book. Um, I've got an old version of that. That's that's the time that I spent in Java. That was it. Yeah. Uh, assuming this is a is this the same one? Yeah, by Kathy Bates. Yeah, or Kathy and Bates. Um. So you like the Udemy? You. Udemy course, U D. Whoops, wrong browser. U D E M Y. Udemy. I think I've looked at these before. Ooh, New Year's only ends in five hours and fifty nine minutes. Got the pressure on you. Pressure tactics. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I, I taught myself programming out of books before all the classes existed. So, like, I'm a big fan of books for learning. Um, I kind of, I was actually looking to see if there was, like, so, as a matter of fact, I was just posting a photo of this one the other day, Learning Pearl, um, from 1997, I think. 97. Um like that's how I started learning. So I'm actually looking at that book because I'm interested in like with Django, one of the things I'm actually doing is the official tutorial does not work for me at all. So I'm going through it, but I'm making my own tutorial going through it that I'll post. It's not, it's more for me and the process of going through it is how I'm learning it. But also it's like, I want to try and make a thing that's pretty good or it's, it's at least better than the one that the official one is. So I'm really kind of interested in the whole like learning thing right now, both incoming and outgoing uh, and seeing what I can do kind of in both of those spaces. So I, I'm with you on the books. That's that's totally, totally in my head, in my ball game, in my sphere. I don't know. I got nothing. Um, 
but yeah, that's that's cool. I, I'll look at I'll look at Udemy. Um, right now, I'm still I still am at a point where I'm doing my own thing. Like I'm learning enough on my own going through the stuff that I'm learning on to get my head around it before I actually go into a course. Because I can I kind of learn both ways. Right now, I'm on the other like the oscillation. Right, I'm on the other swing. And also, like, I really just like getting down and doing it. Um, but it's, uh, I'm going to look at some of this Udemy stuff. Um, dev marketing, business, personal thought, music, photography. All right. You can become an instructor. All right. Yeah, there's uh, 12 bucks. That's not bad either. Uh, actually, here, let's do this while we're on Python. Automate the boring stuff. It's actually the title of a book. I wonder if that's dude. Oh, sweet. 10 bucks, yeah, sweet. Um, and what's super cool is like my boss has no problem paying for training. Um, so it's like that'll, that'll, that's an easy call for him, um, which is one of the ways that I'm very lucky um, is he's into that. Yeah, automated the boring stuff with Python. Yeah, I'll sort, okay, yeah, so that's a dude. Sweet, so the guy who did the book has a is doing a Udemy course. That's probably worth looking at. I'd love, that's probably the first course I'm going to do. Um, yeah, 71,000 and 4.6 stars. I wish that would stop happening though. I need to be able to read the things. Don't, you don't have to do the mouse over for everything. Uh, 2020 complete Python bootcamp from zero to hero in Python. Wow, 300,000. That's incredible. So I've got some professor friends and we've been talking a lot about education and about how all this stuff works. And it's kind of, it's an interesting conversation with them. Um, yeah, 139 versus 20 bucks. Sounds pretty cool. Um, yeah, that's sweet. I, uh, I'll be digging into that. I hadn't really thought too much about the course stuff uh, in a while, but that's, you got me thinking about it, that is for sure. Um, all right, let's see what we got here. So I gotta figure out how to get my head around this. So in order to do one of these, what I wanna do is, I need to send a JSON. So I know I wanna send a JSON, so I'm just gonna start picking parts of these away. Like, I don't really know. I'm going to use the test to kind of guide where I'm going to head. And I don't really know where I'm going to head, so I'm, just, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'm just going to start firing tests away. And if I delete them later, I delete them later. Um, test JSON to Markdown. So, oh, wait, actually, hang on. I'm going to use my hotkey or my whatever this thing is. Except it didn't work. PT? There we go. Ooh. Oh, it automatically moved it to the right place for me. Test JSON to MD. So expected, I'm gonna use the same thing for the expected. I wanna hit that. I don't know why those moved over, but that's okay. And so this is gonna barf. That's fine. UA. JSON to MD. I'm not going to pass anything yet. I just want to barf and make sure it's barfing in the right place. Yep, it doesn't have a thing. So we're going to make the thing EFGHIJ. We'll alphabetize them. Self return. It's going to be the same thing. And that should make us green. There we go. We're green. All right, so now we're gonna pass JSON to it. Oh, we need 
need to actually make it JSON. Um, how do we do that? JSON load. Load string, JSON load string. Read JSON file, uh, JSON load. I think we want to do load S. There we go, JSON from string. So JSON is JSON load, which we're going to need import JSON. Let's alphabetize those. Import JSON. And here we're going to make it look like what we want. Whoops, that didn't work at all. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Do this. Is that still working? Why is it freaking out? Oops. Is this how we need to do it? No, actually, we're going to want to do this, right? Threes. This is all kinds of freaking out. There we go. So we're just going to make up some JSON on the spot. Link one. What was that? Oh, we want this to be maybe an array. Uh, so I didn't read the gang of four backend, um, but I, I went to a class that a woman named Sandy Metz taught, um, Metz a Z, yes. And I've also read her book, um, this one, Practical Object Oriented Design in Ruby, and she she talks about a bunch of the Gang of Four stuff. I don't know particularly which parts, but some of the stuff, like, and so I went to her class too. I was fortunate enough to go to one of her classes. And um, she was talking about a bunch of that stuff. And I can't remember if there's the acronym about open and closed and like all the other stuff. So I don't remember that, those, that level of it but I kind of remember the methodology, or I remember the methodology that she taught that's kind of the, the practical implication that gets you a bunch of those things. Um, I still want to go back and, and actually like read through it um, because I, th I think that would be a valuable thing to do. Um, I mean, it's obviously highly regarded, right? Uh, and I'm using, uh, I don't know if I'm using idea of them. Uh, I am just using the default pie charm as far as I know. So if that's, something that's in there I don't know um I don't I'm not using like vim nope nope uh yeah I don't think I've got anything vim going on in here um I'm assuming this gives you vim, yeah, vim commands, right? I'm not super great at vim. Uh, I can get around it. Um, but yeah, right now I'm just straight. Uh, I, I may play with that. Right now I'm still trying to get a little bit into PyCharm. Like it's, I've only been using it for a few weeks. Uh, but it's, I'm still struggling with the fact that some of the hotkeys that I'm used to using in other text editors aren't the same. Um, the big one that gets me is uh, Apple Shift Up flips lines instead of, oh God, what did that just do? Instead of doing a select all to the top of the page. And I've burned that 1 million times. Um, yeah, sure. I'll take plugin recommendations. Absolutely. I liked Vim. Like, so Vim was a fun thing to do and kind of like, I like it in my fingers, but like you look at Vim magicians and it looks like magic. Uh, <laughs> but I, 
but then some people see me use them and they think I look like magic. And I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. <laughs> this is just the basics. Um, but like it, it, I get around fast enough. Um, it like every now and then I watch that stuff and I'm like, it would be amazing to figure that out. But like, I just haven't tried or put in the practice to do it. Um, so I've got no idea where I would end up with it, but I'm like, I'm happy enough right now with, with where I'm at. Um, but yeah, if you've got plugin recommendations, fire them away. Um, cause I, like I said, I've only been using it for a little while and it's, I've been using sublime text for years. And again, I don't, I don't use most of the power of these things. So with with PyCharm, like doing the testing and like I've I've never really done debugging other than print debugging. So like I'm trying to get more in the habit of and one of my coworkers is helping me by prodding me to be like, hey, use use the debugger, go click through stuff because I'd never seen it like nobody had ever taught it to me. You know, again, self-taught. Um, but seeing some of it, it's like, holy cow, I've. This would have been very useful over the years, but I'm still not used to it. Uh, so I'm still, I'm still figuring it out uh, and enjoying it. Like it's pretty cool. Uh, all right. So we're going to do, how are we going to do this? We're going to do what level do we want to do this at? So we're, we're going to want it as an array, right? So we can give it a sorted array or do we just want it as so I want to, I think I want to start with the URL and then give it the title. Cause if the UR, like the URL is the thing, right? And then we'll do the link. Yeah. And we can actually do it as a hash or whatever JavaScript calls these. Um, because that way we can just look at the key. And if the key is the same, that does our dedupe. Um, and then if the title changed, so what? Um, and it probably won't, but the but the URL would be the would be the the key to the key, right? Um, and I recognize that sometimes you'll see things like if, uh, and I've already seen this a couple times where uh, there's a a page that I click on the top level link, and then there's a page that, and I click on like a um, an internal link that has like the pound sign, the comment link, um, and so those show up. Uh, twice but like again i'll edit it like this like this i'm not working for like you know mission critical launching a rocket thing here um let's see if we're still green nope i broke something json loads did not like that let's why didn't it like that it's not json is that what it is still doesn't like it Uh, oh, there's no quote. Let's try that. Better? Happy? Nope. Local variable reference before assignment. That's right here. What am I doing? Is that gonna make it happy? That makes it happy. Oh, you can't call it JSON, I guess. That's a bummer. Right? That's what happened. Yep. Okay. JSON object. All right. So now we're going to throw this here. Uh, sweet. <laughs> Indian progress bar. That's pretty good. Nice. I grab that and just throw it over here. 
Did that save? I don't think that saved. Hang on. So I added in a font and an image of what the theme and font look like. You lost me on that one. Oh, 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 down here. Nice. Fira code? I don't know Fira code. Gotcha. <laughs> I love this. Also, there are one million squirrely brackets in there. I like it. Explore for this. All right, whatever. Cool. Yeah, I'll definitely look at this. Uh, flex the muscles and uh, high charm a little bit. Sweet. I think it got it saved over here so I can go review. Uh, this looks different in Chrome. Interesting. The the lining's different. Oh, what was that? Oh, I gave him. Okay, I was. It looked like a giant ad. I just happened to be up there on the middle of the thing. Um, all right, so let's throw, I gotta figure out what the right way, what's the right order for these things? What's gonna be the most pleasant? That's eh, probably fine. We're gonna throw this at it now. It's gonna puke because it's got a parameter coming. So, oh, we're gonna name it because now I know how to do that. Um, JSON object equals JSON object. But now we can do this. Oh, where do you put the star on this? Probably there. Yep. okay. All right, so we've got our JSON object going. So now we can just parse out the JSON object and actually make it like do work. So uh, let's see, for JSON line, in JSON object print JSON line. I know I just talked about using the debugger and I'm not. Yep, cool. Um, I guess we could do JSON key, JSON URL. Actually, yeah, it's gonna be the URL, right? URL. Uh, here, let's do That's a good way to do this. Uh, we got a class. We could assign it into the class, but let's start simple. So, output string equals. So, the first thing, I just want to do this and move this up here and make sure this works. Right? Does that work? What did I do? JSON lines on, oh, here we go. Test passed, okay. So now we can try and overwrite output string with this. How would we do that with the overwrite? Um, output string equals quote, how do you append a string in Python? No. 
never heard of it. Oops, I don't know if I'm in the middle there. Modern program manager that makes developers happier. Oh, developed by Jeff Brands. Okay, I gotta use cookies, it's fine. I've never heard of this. There's your hello world print line, hello world, okay. Object oriented, hello world, class greeter, file name, string, okay, yeah, yeah. Fun, main, args, array, greeter. Huh, okay. It's been fun, main. Protein scope, four i n zero until 10, right, launch. Play 10 print I. Okay. Gotta wait for a minute. There you go. Hello, Kotlin. Hello, name. Where's Kotlin get passed in? Good agree. Hello, name. I see name. Where do you pass in the. Uh... I'm missing it. Probably right in front of me. Basically Java, but not verbose. A bunch of different syntactical features. Cool, yeah. Add that to the list to play with. So, yeah. Um, yeah, value name is a string. Okay, I gotcha, yeah. Yeah, and you can roll way back, right? This I don't totally get. Suspend fun main coroutines. I have to look into this. I don't understand this. I mean, I get a for loop, right? But I don't understand this part of it. Or I don't know what that part does. I guess would be a better way to say that. Cool. I like it. Java. Uh, where am I going? What am I doing? All right, so we got this. We're pulling the URLs and we're getting the output string. Oh yeah, we're gonna look and see how we append. You just need the plus, okay. Can you do plus equal? Yeah, using plus equal. Add one string to another string. Okay, yeah, so you can just plus equal itself, right? So this is gonna freak out. Oops, let's get that out of there for now. Just so we can see the test output. Oh yeah, so it just did a straight append. Okay, that's cool. So if we do this with that in the middle, with this with that in the middle, with this dot format, oops, quote dot format. And we're gonna pass URL is gonna be the second thing. The first thing is gonna be JSON object URL. I think we're gonna need a new line there, right? Because it doesn't automatically do new lines. What's that gonna do? Passed. All right, got it. So we're building. So that's how we build the output. So we can get rid of this, get rid of that. So there's our output. So that, okay, yeah, that formats, that formats our output. So now all we gotta do is figure out how to do the JSON, to throw the JSON object at it, get the JSON 
object and throw it to it. Um, which again, I don't want to test the file system. So we're picking up a JSON object. We're making the MD string, which will just print, which will just spit out. And again, I don't want to test the file system. So final output. So now we need to do new, now we need to do the DD. So how, oh yeah, so let me go look at So here is, all right, we're just gonna run one of these, which is gonna be def get tabs, tab data. Um, I actually wanna make this, this self, Tab data. Nope. And tab data is going to be what? A string? Or what are we going to do that as? What does it come back as originally? Uh, so we're going to split. Output lines is set. Get this. So it runs a sub process, and you get it's a big string. Tab data string. I'm just gonna call it what it is. Do you have to define it, or can you just leave it as a thing? It exploded. That final output. Oh, what did I break? Oh, get tab beta. That's what's going on. Tab data string. Yeah, so you gotta give it, you gotta give it a type. All right, so we got that. So we're gonna go. And this is just gonna pull. All this stuff. Actually, we can do it as a set. Get tab data set. So we don't need that. We're gonna do this. Run some process as a tab script. Okay, maybe that's gonna work. And then we're gonna pull Yeah, I'm just gonna use all the same code. I'll move it up a line at a time just to. And actually, let me do, can I run this file? If name, main. This is where I don't know what the right way, like the white or a good process for this is. UA equals this, go for it. UA, whatever, print, UA. Actually, we can just run it. UA dot. T 
See, this isn't something I can really test very easily because I'm it's using a different or it's using a external process. So I just have to trust that the external process is doing it. Well, so I could pull. No, 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 no. So I don't want to do that. I want to pull. I've made a bunch of changes without actually doing anything testing wise. Give me one second. Oh, we're going to test real quick. How are we doing? Still green? We are not. Self dot seems like a bad idea. Tab data. No. Um, okay, there we go. So I just want to get the OSA string because I can't really test this. So I just want to I just want to straight pull it in. Let's see if it actually works. Uh, so we're gonna run it. Then we're gonna print and see what we got. Uh, we're gonna run this file. So it's going and grab. I've got a million tabs open, so <laughs> this is gonna take a minute. <sighs> Finished. Kind of was expecting to print something. Except we're returning it. That's not what we want to do. Self, we'll say string. We want to do that. Now it's happened. There we go. It's a bunch of crap. Okay. So now we, we've separated that out. I'm gonna comment this out for a minute. Get rid of some of this junk. And actually now would be a good time to... So we've got that string to work. Well, I got here's all the junk to work with. Okay, so this gives us something to do, right? Because now, so like a, a really simple process here. We don't have to like dedupe, dedupe. Um, a really simple process is to have an existing JSON turn this into JSON and just, or not even turn it into JSON, just have an existing object loop through these and update the JSON object. Cause if it's, if the element or if the key, the URL isn't there, it'll just add it. And if it is there, it'll just overwrite it, but it'll, it should be over, like it's a URL. So it's universal resource locator. Like it'll be the same thing. Um, so that's how we're gonna do it. I don't know why I regular expressions in there right now. Get that all there. I'm sure, actually I know why we're gonna need it, but we'll add it when we need it. Um, so we need to do the combined script. Uh, 
PT. Zip it back up there. There we go. Combine JSON and raw. So expect it. So what, what do we want to produce out of this? What we want to produce out of this is a JSON string. Because that's what we're going to use to, to dump. So we're going to start with a JSON string and a regular string. We're going to throw those things at a method and we're going to get back a JSON string. So the expected JSON string we're going to get back is JSON load s. Um, and the good news is it's going to be an object, so it doesn't matter. So, yep, we're going to do this. Uh, I can do quotes. Actually, we're going to do completely different examples just to... Twitter.com. Twitter. Added site.com. Added site. Duplicate duplicate sites.com. Duplicate sites. All right, so this is gonna explode. Oops, no, it's not, because we're on the wrong file. This is gonna explode. Uh, it's exploding again for the wrong reason. What's going on? Oh, because I didn't close it. Strings not equal to that. That's cool. Okay. Uh, so again, we're gonna we're just gonna drop this straight in just to fix this. Make sure we're green. We're green. Okay. And now actual equals ua dot. Combine JSON and raw, which is gonna choke because we don't have it yet, which is what we want. Turn value, oops, didn't work. And now we're just gonna go all shameless green on it. Or E T U R N return value. Test failed. Kind of expected that to work. I goof somewhere. What did I goof? Okay, that's green. So it's in this one. I did something silly. What's going on? I literally copied it. Oh, JSON's not defined. Here we go. That's helpful. Try that. There we go, green. Okay, so now we need to pass two things into that. Initial JSON, initial raw. Initial 
missile JSON, initial raw. So I'm not actually gonna pass anything yet. I'm just gonna, this should break because it's, the params are different. Catch those. Oop. One position argument. Did I pass the wrong thing? What's going on? It takes one positional argument, but three were given. Uh, oh, 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 I know what's going on. Whoops. Whoops. About this there we go so now we're passing stuff in now we can do the work we've got a green backstop so yeah we're just gonna pass in the raw string so we need to turn the raw string well, we can do it either way. Um, trying to figure out, this may be a little complicated for one method. Uh, and again, I'm trying to work through making things do a single thing. Um, Yeah, I want to split that out. I'm going to just get rid of it. Test raw string to JSON. Yeah, this is gonna be better. Um, oh, you know what I should have done is I should have captured that uh, this for a few examples. I keep everything I see is Google. Whatever, I'll do this. Copy for the sublime text. Oh, was that a bunch of links that we had right there? Is that what that was? No, this is the raw code. Okay, 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 okay. That's good. Whatever. Um, So test raw string to JSON, expected. I'm just gonna put this here for now. So what we want is a JSON object. Oh God, here. Title one. URL1.com because we don't have to, they don't, these don't need to be real. Title 2 URL2.com Title 3 Oh, wait a minute, these are going to be
See, the problem is... The JSON, the object may not be the same. Oh, well, it shouldn't have an order. Okay, wait, this should work. JSON loads... way to do this, but this is the only way I can think of to do it right now. So that and 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 that. All right, we green. Nope. Somewhere I have thrown. Oh, is it not like these? Let's see if it doesn't like those. JSON decoder, extra line two, column 20. Huh? Oh, we need to put it in a type here. Okay, so now we do this. And we're gonna go ahead and pass this just to set up the way it's gonna work. Raw string equals raw string. So this will bomb. Bomb, good. No attribute, right. String return value equals actually don't know what that's gonna do. Is that gonna pass? No. Oh yeah, yeah, because we're not actually processing it. Uh we're just gonna pass this. And get the green, hopefully. There's our green. Whoa, what's going on with the mouse? And now we can process. Okay, yeah, this is a better, I like this better than the other one. Uh, let's see. So we've got our raw string. Hmm, doesn't debug through the tests. Um, String. There you go. Okay. I'm not used to doing that yet. Um, so now what we want to do is turn that raw string into what of a thing, uh, JSON. So Uh, actually, I know it's in there a little bit. So, raw string lines, raw string split on new lines, 
for raw string line in raw string raw string lines print raw string line there we go and then raw string parts equals raw string line split on our tilde thing and then so that's got our parts So return JSON. Should we actually just hold this as an object? We should just have this as an object. So we just want to run it and then actual equal UA. Oh shit. How do you do that as? All right, I'm going to bail on this test and start a new one real quick. Because that's green. I don't want to leave it as is. So raw data to object. Well, but that's going to... Yeah, that'll dedupe. So if there's nothing in the object, that'll be fine. Right? So if we do this and we do... that so that passes and now if we do ua update the object with raw data and then we're going to pass it raw data equals raw data lots of raw data hanging out around here for now, we'll just do this, right? We'll just set up the format. So this is gonna puke because that doesn't exist. Just verify that. Us is not defined, ah, let's fix that. No attribute raw data, yeah, okay, cool. JSON, let's return value. What is this in? URSTU. Let's put this right on down here. No, um, there is no return value. It just. Stay one away from green. So now we're gonna do, so we've done that. And now we want actual to equal UA object data. We're just gonna puke because that doesn't exist. So we're gonna add it. And 
now it's going to puke because the objects don't match. But we can make them match here, right? Oops. Actually, let's leave that as is and come down here and do it here, right? Passing. Okay. So we can just... So we get the string. And we put it in here. That's our output, JSON, raw string to JSON. We don't actually want to do that. We want to do, which we're going to comment this out for a minute. Comment this out for a minute. Everybody happy? Test passing, test passing. All the test passing, all the kings win, okay. So test raw data to object. So now we need to send, so now, okay. Yeah, yeah, so we're just, so we can get rid of this. data to object. So now we actually need to parse the raw data into the object. And actually what we should do, let's make sure there's two in there. So one, that's gonna fail, right? Good. again green again okay so now so we're going to pass the raw data and the raw data is going to uh, I spelled that wrong fail pass so the raw data is going to look like this This is a better way to do this. That, and then. That, whoops. That. So that's not gonna change anything. But we've got it to play with here. And we can just keep overwriting this. This is cool. Yeah, I like this. So we can actually just do the split, right? For line in raw data split new line for part in line split Tildes. We don't want a semicolon or a colon there. Object data. Part the one equals part the zero. Are we still green? We're still green. And now, if we take this out of the path. Oops. Run. 
Oh, yeah, we went all. Not so. Green. Part. Okay, so what do we do here? Split. Part zero. Part. Print. Okay, that's fine. Print. Well, actually, let's see what happens here if we put a debug here. We'll try and use the debug tactics. Part this title one. So line is that part. Four part in split. So line. Oh, 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 I, we got, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. That's helpful. Parts equals line split. Parts one, parts zero. We green, we green, we green. We're green. There we go. This is getting interesting. I like this. All right, so now I can get rid of all this junk. So that's got, so that's parsing for the JSON. So if we just load the JSON object, so if you just, yeah, so if you just load, so if you load the file with a JSON into it, I should set up more straight. I don't wanna work on that. Um, into self data object as the initial thing. And then Uh, parse the tabs, parse that into the JSON object, or into the object. That does your dedupe. And then you don't even need, you don't even need JSON into Markdown. you would just do object into markdown. So, all right, so we're gonna commit this. Parsing Apple script into object data. Okay, so we're going to get this, we're going to load. So the other thing we're gonna do is like, get JSON archive data. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, So that goes into the object data. We get our string, we parse our string, that it that, that does the dedupe. Then we've got the object. Yeah, then we just print out. So we don't, we don't think we're gonna need this. And we're gonna copy it in a second, but.
So, what do we want to do? What am I looking to do? So if we've got the JSON data, it goes into the object. We don't need to test that. What we need is object to MD. QR, MMO, PQR, okay. So expected, as we can do this. Uh, where's our markdown examples? Everybody cool? Nope. The hell? Where'd that go? Oh, wait. Now it passed. I don't like that at all. JSON to MD. Oh, did I not comment all that out? Okay, yeah, JSON to Markdown. That's where we're going to run. Okay. Test, three passed, okay. Mess, mess, messing with me, messing with me. Test raw string to JSON, which we're not doing. So we can get rid of that. Do we still have that here? Just tidying up kind of nicely. All right, so we got that, we got that. Okay, so now test object data to MD. So we wanna get markdown out of this and that's the markdown we wanna get. So that's the markdown we're getting. So now Actual equals UA dot object data to MD. So should this, should this return something or should this actually, I, I think I'm going to set this in the class. How do you do that staying one away from green? Uh, UA dot. Make MD. From object data. So let's get a choke. That'll pass. No, did not. Oh, did I miss that earlier? How about I missed that earlier? Oh, 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 no, I didn't. Sorry. There we go. So now, actual equals UA. MD data, MD string, which that's going to fail. Because it doesn't exist. Self.MD string. And now it's going to fail because it's got the wrong thing. But if we do this, pass.
passing? Passing. There we go. I like this. This is nice. Okay. Oh, wait, the other thing we need to do is, excuse me, set object data. So this is working, okay. Do get rid of that. Pass. Yep. For key and self object data. Self md string plus equals I just want to see if that works yeah okay so we're going to do this with these with that with this with these with that format format that that for a second Everybody passing, yep. Key. Key, whoops. Key. Passing, passing. All right, what happens if we do this? Passing. No. Ah. Uh, is it the new line? Click to see difference. Oh, I'm backwards. Backwards. Expected link. Oh, right, 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 That is backwards. Let's try that. It's going to be a new line thing. Yeah, that's what I thought. Green. JSON, so I'm not going to delete that yet. So final output can actually go away because we're just doing like this. This markdown string is the final output. So this can go away. And we're just coming it out for now. 
We're just gonna explode, right? Oh no, see, makes me nervous. Thank you. Let's raw data to object, yeah. What did we do here? Oh, right, we can do it up here. Where's my get things? My get buttons. Oh well. Put that. No, you can still see it. It's weird. Okay. Feels off center somehow. Okay, commit message. Create markdown output from object. So, okay. So, we're going to get the JSON data. We're going to lo load our this data. So that gives us our object data as a full model. Then we build the output string. Then we output the output string. We save our JSON, which is just the object, which we don't need to test. Then we are done, right? Let's try it. Um, so we're gonna make a JSON file here. Well, and what you'd want to do is do it by the day. So there's more to do here because you want the you want it to be archived by day. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna work on this. Current data dot json. We're just gonna do this. And we're gonna save that. And we're gonna do this. And we're gonna make. So we get it. Load. JSON data. So that's gonna, whatever. Actually, we're gonna run it, right? It's gonna explode us, which is also like UA. Yep. So I'm not sure what the like right technical way is to kind of walk through these things, but this is how I'm gonna do it. ABCFG get def get load JSON data. We'll call it that. And get rid of this one. Let me see if G H J K L. Bring your JSON file. That's exactly what I'm looking for. With file path as JSON file data. Precisimal. some file and we want to do that into here just load all that right up okay that's why was that gray so that loads our data then we're gonna get our OSA data which goes into this OSA script string Oh, wait, 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 where does it go? Yeah, okay, that goes into the string. Or 
We're missing one. Update object with raw data. Okay. Oh, so we don't need to... I think I got a booger. Um, update object with raw data it doesn't need to be past raw data. We can use this off of the string. So we need to test that. Right. We want to stay green while we're doing this. I wish there was a way to just force it to run all the tests. I think there is, but I can't remember it. This is ugly, is what this is. You know what help? It's an object, so you can just do this. I'm not sure if that's the right. Uh, oops, Ooh, we'll do that. That would freak it out. I need to like so. Test object data to markdown. Yes, we want to do that. That's cool. That does our markdown formatting. Cool. Test raw data to object. I'm gonna make a new one. What do we call it? OSA data? Right, because we want to move that into data. on that. Oh, look at it. Tabbed it right. Look at you. You go, pie charm. All right. Everybody cool? Everybody's cool. So expected is actually going to be, we want to have an object. We can copy this data, I think. You're not supposed to copy test, but I'm copying test. Expected actual. <laughs> and the order shouldn't matter, right? I'm actually curious about that now. Doesn't matter. Sweet. Still gotta put it in order. Whoops. Shit. I don't know what's going on. I do know what's going on. I've got too many hotkeys and different things going on. Excuse me. Oops. Um, sweet. Getting a little tired. Want to see if I can finish this up. At least the first iteration of it. Uh, okay. What am I doing? So I got this. Object data. So that's going to be wrong. That's fine. Oh, here's a good way to do that. So one step away from the green is to do this. So I can always back into that. Me? Eh. Nah, that's not a good place to do that. That's gonna choke, right? Get back to green. So, UA make uh, update object from OSA script string. 
So that's gonna puke. Here's where we put that in. So that's still gonna puke, but we can do this. Right? Passing, okay. I wanna take this out. And I want to take the thing that calls it out, which is this. Passing, passing. Passing, passing, all right. So now we're updating. Now we can get rid of this actual because we're calling it for real here. Now we need to update pass in the right data to make this happen, which is going to be here. That should still pass because nothing's happening. I'm just trying to think about how I want it, where I want to have this stuff um, stored. It's fine for now. Um, so OSA script string, and so now we do the processing here, which we're actually gonna copy this because this should be the same. I think. with the difference that we're gonna go from self that. Why is that angry? What else going on there? Fuck it, we'll see what happens. Test failed. Still feels a little weird. Oh, that's probably what it was. It was an indentation off. All right, let's walk through it again. So. Make the thing, load the JSON data in the tuple object, get the OSA script, just pull in the raw data into the string. Yeah, I like that. I like that split. So I was thinking, oh, you could just do the data in there, but like you want to, you want to get the thing to work with because that's touching the file system. Don't touch that. Just do, just grab the data from the file system and then do your processing. 
So load days for them. So the, these are the two that loads the two barrels. Then here. And the JSON just goes straight into the object. It doesn't need parsing. But then update object from OSA script, that updates, so that gives you your JSON back. No, print, uh, whatever, just print the object. UA. Object data. Nothing happened. Uh, we didn't, why didn't we put in the data? Make empty object from the string. We don't need to do that yet. Update object from OSA script. Self object if part part zero. Object data. Yeah, it should be updating, right? Object data loads the current JSON file. Okay, so that looked like that worked. No. Yeah, yeah. Test.com. No, text.com. I don't know what that is. It's probably porn. <laughs> uh, PGATour.com, whatever. PGA Tour. So save that. Archive URLs. Run this. Okay, so it's doing that. Why is the so four line script split parse object data parts? Rough. Oh, maybe because I'm not calling that. Uh, that'd be why. Let's see how that goes. Give me data. Oh, listen to X out of range. Oh, there's gonna be a thing where. How do you check to, how about this, try. What does that do? I don't even know how this works. Didn't like it. <sighs> List index of that range, parts one, zero, one, blah, 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 blah. If that, then this. I thought the try would catch it. <sighs> okay. If Lynn parts. Equals two, right? it's not zero indexed. There you go. So that is our object. We 
which we can save out to JSON. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna save that to JSON. into a variable soon, but not right now. Right as JSON file. Hi, JSON, right. Definitely, definitely, definitely making multiple changes, but that's okay. Sometimes you just do that. It's just the object. We're just gonna. Oh, wait, wait, wait. JSON object. Crap. Uh, I don't know. Let's see what happens. No, oh, whoops. That's output JSON. Maybe we need a uh, that. Whoops, that. Oh, let's see if it saves. Looks like it saved. So we load it, load that, mush them together, save it, and then Give us some markdown. None. None ya. JSON's still there. That's a good sign. Make MD from object data. Why did that not work? For key, self object in itself, MD string. So, MD string, gotcha. So we run that, and then we call MD string, or then we look at MD string. Uh, 
There she blows. Yeah, cool. Cool, cool, cool. This is pretty slick. I like this. Like, it's pretty tight. Yeah, there's still some work to do. A bunch of cleanup, which we're gonna do right now. I'm gonna leave these because I wanna I'll pull these out. Wanna do the the mix ends or the mix ends, whatever the um best JSON. Don't need that. Don't need that. Yeah, it's funny, there's only Turning the object data into the markdown and turning the OSA script into uh, into the object. Max number of code lines in one dev? I is there a maximum number when you run out of memory? I I don't know. Um, the I, I really have no idea, so here, try something. Um, uh, let's see, for, oh, how do you do Python for loops? Whatever, we're gonna look it up up here. Wow, my machine is crawling. Python for loop. Let's do something fun. So, for range one to 3000, print, print, oh, here, let's do this, print, Print do 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 do. Am I doing this right? Format X. So there's three thousand print statements. So here's 3,000 lines in a def. Oh, actually we just do this. There's 3,000 lines, no problem at all. Optimal for program, abstractly, for reading for other people. Oh, 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 okay. Um, I think I've heard seven or eight. Um, I think pip eight, the Python style might have something about that. 
extension space, max line length. Like I, I usually try and keep it under eight. Like eight's really kind of pushing it for me. Um, now, oftentimes you'll end up with big ones, especially if you have to like, if you're dealing with lines and like, I probably have some here that's bigger than that. Um, that's all test stuff, but uh, yeah, so five, six, you know, whatever. Ugh. It's kind of like one of those if if you struggle if you're struggling just a little bit to like keep your head around it, then other people are too. But I've I've heard seven or eight. Um and then but there's always a little bit of wiggle room on either side or on the upside. But if, if you're doing like a seventeen or a thirty line definition, um that's probably worth and it's also you're probably doing a lot in there. So it's worth kind of like breaking that apart or, or, or like it's kind of a code smell, basically, if there's too uh, if there's too many lines in there, like you're probably trying to do a whole bunch of stuff in one method or one function. And that's probably worth examining getting out uh, into into multiple things. Uh, so it's easier to reason about, but also it's easier to test, easier to make sure that it's uh, it's doing it right. Um, what's the. I've been mentioning Sandy Metz a lot today. Uh, here we go. There are four rules. Um, classes can be no longer than 100 lines of code. Methods no longer than five. Pass no more than four parameters. Um, or hashes options are parameters. Um, Controllers can instantiate only one object. So, yeah. So this this is probably where I was. I was thinking it was seven or eight, but this going for five is like it's a good thing to shoot for, because um, you get nice concise chunks. Like it's easily testable for uh, for what you're for what you're looking at. Uh, so that's that's a good guideline. Uh, it's something to strive for. Uh, I don't get religious about that stuff though. So, um, and sometimes when you're working on smaller projects, it's one of those where it's like, eh. But like, I also like the idea of practicing on the smaller projects to try and get stuff. So that when I'm working on bigger, bigger projects, my habit isn't to do the the less well refined thing. Uh, I guess would be the way I'd put that. Um, but yeah, so try that. Try five. Try seven. Try eight. Going above eight, it's probably probably your code's getting a little to the point where you're like, let me see if there is something in there that I can do to, to make it smaller, um, breaking it up a little bit and getting more kind of digestible pieces. So, uh, I mean, my original scripts were all just one big procedural thing from top to bottom. So it's, you know, it's all perspective. Um, but anyways, I, so I got to run because uh, it is it is hit the point. I was pushing that for a little bit because I wanted to get that first iteration out. Um, so it's it's pretty solid. Like I'm in I'm in pretty good shape with it. It's showing uh, it's returning the stuff that I expect to return, um, which is nice. I've still got to do some stuff. So here's yeah. So here's PGA Tour, which is what I put in explicitly. And then it has all the rest of the stuff in there that it pulled from my tabs. And hopefully the JSON data saved. Yep. So I, I still need to go through and do the ordering of this, scrub out the links that I don't want to have, um, and messing around with it. But this is the first iteration of the tool. Um, oh, I also need to set up so it's only like archives like each day as its own thing. Um, but that's in pretty good shape. Like that, it took a little while to get there because I was kind of banging around and 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 moving around trying to figure out exactly how I wanted to do it. But I mean, it's. It's short and sweet. Like, um, you load some JSON data, you load the tab data that's raw string, and then you push that into the same object as the JSON data, which does your dedupe for you. And then you 
convert that back into Markdown in the format that you want, and then you save it. Like, that's basically it. Um, I mean, that is it. Yeah, so load JSON, load the tabs, move the tab data into the object, save out your JSON, make your Markdown object, like get the print and then print it out. I'm really happy with that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, anyways, uh, y'all have a good night. We'll see you. We'll do it again soon. Uh, tomorrow night, almost certainly. Uh, probably starting at 8, 7.38 Eastern tomorrow night. So y'all have a good one. We'll see you. Bye-bye.